So it's good to humble ourselves because when we humble ourselves, we realize that we need, we need him. We need him. We need Jesus. <laughs> we got Jesus. Thank God we got Jesus. And I'm, saying, I'm not saying we're without Jesus, but just because you got a car doesn't mean you don't need your car. Right? You still need your car. If you got a car, you need your car so you can get to places and you can go places. Right? Well, we got Jesus. Hallelujah. But we still need him. Need him for everything. Amen? And so uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. 4, 14. Hebrews chapter 4, 14. Seeing... We're talking about Jesus. Seeing then we have a great high priest. That's talking about Jesus, amen? Who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. What's the confession? Jesus. We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, let us hold fast. Our... Jesus, it's really simple. What are you confessing? Well, I, I need Jesus, Amen? And without him, I can do nothing. Verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness or is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the old King James would say. But he, he, he sympathizes with our, our weakness. I like the old King James. He, uh, he knows the feelings. He's, not, he's, he's, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So in other words, he understands he understands. He understands what it means to be a human, a man. Jesus completely understands you. You know, some folks will say, uh, I, I, I've, been in, I've been where you're at. But everybody's different. Everyone's not the same. And so even though someone says, yeah, I, I, can, I can relate to you, the same thing happened to me. Or I, I fell into that, or I did that thing as well. I can, I can relate to you. But everybody interprets things differently. But Jesus understands exactly how it feels to be you. He understands the feelings, the feelings of your infirmities. He's not a, so... Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a, a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as you, we are, yet without sin. He was tempted like we were, but he was without sin. Hallelujah. He went through everything that you have ever gone through up to this point in your life. He's gone through everything you have ever gone through up to this point in your life. There is nothing special about, there's no new thing. You're not experiencing nothing that he hasn't experienced. Hallelujah. And he's your faithful and high priest. Hallelujah. He went through it for you. He experienced all that for you. So he could, you could experience freedom. Amen. So you can say, hey, this is where I'm at. But thank God he's my helper. I'll locate, yep, I'm not missing it right here. I don't know what I'm doing right here. Lord, this is where I'm at. But you're my helper. You're, you, let us come boldly. You go to the next verse. Let us come boldly. So after uh, understanding that we have a high priest who identifies with us completely, you know, when you feel, when you, uh, whatever you're feeling, whether you're depressed, anxious, uh, tired, because you didn't sleep well, or whatever it is, he, 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 he's identified with wherever you've been. Now, because his, he identified with us, and he's a faithful high priest, we can come, let us therefore come boldly, let us therefore come boldly. So what do we do when we feel weak? What do we do when we feel defeated? What do we do when we feel like uh, we come up, up short? What do we feel like, oh, wow, this, where's that job at? Well, what do we do when we, we're fighting with our spouse? 
What do we do when we're, we feel like we're not making connections with our children? What do we do when we're at the job place and there's people just talking behind your back? What do you do? Do we whine? Do we complain? Oh, well, look at them. Look at what they're doing. Do we compare ourselves among ourselves? Do we start saying, well, I'm much more, I'm way better than they are? No. Let us come boldly. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. There's a throne of grace. There's a throne of grace, and we can come, we have access. It's not like we're denied, we're going, trying to get into a, a, a concert down the lower level so we can get real close to the band, and we're denied access. You don't have the VIP, but you have the VIP pass. All-inclusive VIP pass. V, VIP pass. To the throne of grace. Hallelujah, there's a throne of grace. What is grace? Grace is God's favor on your life. You got to understand, even though you don't feel, you might be going through the trenches, you have favor on your life. You have the grace of God favors you. Hallelujah. It's, there's a throne of grace, and he wants you to come boldly to it. Why does he want you to come, to, come boldly to the throne of grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. It's God's ability to do for you what you could not do for yourself. Huh? It's God's ability to do for you what you could not do for you. Grace. Grace. God's ability to do. You know what? Most times we miss it because we're trying to do it without grace. Trying to live life without grace. Anytime you stumble, it's because you're functioning outside of grace. And you got to realize, well, I did that out of the flesh. I did that because of religious thinking. I did that because of fear. I did that because I fell into the trap. Because the remedy to that, to the flesh, to, to legalism, to fear, to anything that's, uh, to anything, disease, to, to poverty, the poverty mentality, the remedy to that is grace. Grace. We need grace to walk in grace. So let us come boldly. You know, God wants us to come boldly <laughs> to the throne of grace that we may obtain. He wants us to come boldly, no matter how you feel, no matter what happened yesterday or the day before or this week or a month ago or 20 years ago that's, that's been on the forefront of your thinking. He wants you to come boldly to the, that you may obtain something. He wants you to obtain something, that you may obtain mercy. Mercy. You get Mercy through grace. We're looking for mercy apart from grace. You can't get it. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Uh -uh. Thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. Thank God for his mercy. But we come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. In the time of what? In need. Who needs? Huh? What do you need help with? If you, oh, I don't need to help with nothing. I got all my ducks in a row. I got all my T's crossed, all my I's dotted. I got it. I got it. I got it all. No. No. We're supposed to go. And to the throne of grace to find mercy to help in the time of need. We ought to come and, and stay at the, at the foot of grace. Amen. We ought to sit there like Mary did, just sat at the feet of Jesus and let everybody else run and get distracted. But we're sitting at the throne of grace, getting, getting the word of life, getting revived, getting, getting everything we need pertaining to life, listening at the foot of grace understanding, wow, I know why I missed it. I know why I'm in this cycle. I know why I can't get past this. I know why, I, you know, hey, I, I'm expecting more. And, well, it's because I got in the way. I didn't realize it was me that was in the way. Some of you say, well, this was, it must have been the devil. A lot of times it's just us. Huh? We're getting in our own way and we don't realize it. Well, what's, what's, what time is it? 
Well, it's grace time. 